Hello, bonjour, Calgary. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta and that 90,000 live right here in Calgary? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And now, thanks to Shaw Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about our special people, places, events, and activities happening in this fair city, in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English, and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Today, we're chatting with Étienne Allary, director and editor for the Francophone newspaper Le Franco. Hi. Hi, Étienne. So, Étienne, tell us, uh, to start off with, a little bit about yourself. About myself. Your I'm background yeah. and... Raised and born in Quebec, near Ottawa, across the river. I attend a school in La Cité Collégiale. That was a collegial diploma for two years. After that, I spent five years in Saskatchewan working for that fran the francophone newspaper over there it's called it was called Louis uh, back then it was 1995 through 2000 I met my wife there in, uh, in Saskatchewan but she was from Saguenay so another part of oh. Quebec so it was a kind of a <laughs> when you're a francophone minority you meet other Quebecers or other francophones yes. and you you chat and you and in 2000, we decided to maybe start a family. So we, did, we want to be closer from our family. So we moved back to Ottawa. And after a few years, we decided we were missing a little bit of the Western Canada minority context. So uh, the Franco opportunity uh, was there. The, the window was open. So I applied to the job and I'm still there since 2005. Oh. So it's my eight year now as the editor of Le Franco. Basically, the Franco editor is a big title because it's a small newspaper. We have three employees and a few, uh, uh, a few freelancers, if you want to mm -hmm. char characterize it like that. So editor, I'm also the, the designer of the newspaper. So we do a little bit of everything. I'm also doing some feature articles. So a big title for a, a small team. So we do a little bit of everything. So, and the Franco is a monthly newspaper? Le Franco is a weekly newspaper uh, that started in, over in 1928 at that time. It was called La Survivance. It was uh, produced by Dis Dis Les Oblats. Uh, they're part of a big part of the Francophone heritage that we have mm -hmm. today. I know a few towns in Alberta are, are there because the Oblats was there. So they decided to do a newspaper over there. And in I'm Edmonton? Did in it Edmonton. It's in Edmonton. always been in Edmonton, the head office, you want to say so, it's in Edmonton. Uh, in 19, uh, in the 60s or beginning of the 70s, they sold that newspaper to the ACFA. It's called the Association Canadienne Française de l'Alberta. It's the French-speaking provincial uh, organization. Mm -hmm. So we're part of them. So they're, they're behind our administration or their owner, they are the owner of the newspaper. And the newspaper is sent throughout the province every week to their members and other that want to subscribe to the newspaper. Head office is in, uh, like I said, in Edmonton, but we try to develop and be more aggressive being in Calgary. They had a monthly for a few years and that monthly shut down last spring. So the community asked me to maybe to start something new or start a new newspaper. There was a uh, an appeal for that or uh, uh, the challenge was there, the, the opening was there from the, the business side. A few real estate agents was phoning me and they want, they want to advertise. So they asked me to start a new monthly newspaper. So now since last December, uh, September, we're also based in Calgary, but the head office is in Edmonton. I got two reporters here part time that cover activities and it's all produced in Edmonton. So you've got the weekly from Edmonton. Yeah, it's called the Franco. Le Franco, and the name of the monthly. It's a Franco, Calgary, and South Sud de l'Alberta, South in, in English. So it covers uh, uh, Calgary uh, through Lethbridge and Minnesota, and uh, we go to Canmore and Banff. So we cover the big Bow Valley area, uh, and we go through. Also, we're pretty close with the francophone school boards. 
So okay. where they have a Francophone school in Okotoks, in Brooks, the Franco Monthly is also there. And we're distributed in the school to all the families once a month. Ah, good. And where do you get your stories? Do you get them ahead of time? Do you get them through your correspondence? Uh, yeah, being a, a weekly work? newspaper, we're like the, the mirror of the Francophone community. So we report what the Francophone community is doing every week. Uh, with, with internet that being so popular today, covering the legislative assembly in, Edmund, in Edmonton wouldn't be maybe more accurate today than it was at the past. So we need to maybe be more a community newspaper. We're part of the community. The community own the newspaper. So if the health association, the Francophone health association is doing something, we're covering it. If the arts association is doing something or uh, having a show or a, a big name from down east doing a, a show here in Edmonton or in Calgary, we cover there. And so we report what the, the Francophone community is doing. So if the Francophone community were part of a national news story, you would cover that. Otherwise, n national news or anything like that is yeah. left to... Well, Le Franco is part of a national Francophone association of newspaper in the same context that we are. So in a minority uh, with an Anglophone majority province. So we're part of the APF, it's called Association de la Presse Francophone. So we chat with other colleagues from across the country to say, what kind of story that could maybe be uh, accurate to, to us to cover and for them and have a, maybe a, an interprovincial story. So, and ah. if it's a national uh, team or a national uh, uh, story, we have a reporter in Ottawa that's covering those big news from the Francophone at the, at the Parliament Hill, if you want to say so. so or if maybe uh, francophones from Alberta are doing something outside yeah. the province or whatever. We have whatever. those, let's say the francophone in Alberta is going to Manitoba doing something. I asked my colleague in Manitoba if their reporter can cover that for us. So okay. it, now it's easier and we got a, a good story from there when they are there. Uh, instead of waiting them to come back and, okay, what do you think about that? And, yes. oh yeah, do you have a picture of that? We weren't there, so can you provide us a picture? So. If we have a report over there, it's easier to, to cover the story and being, uh, uh, let's say, more accurate with the news and more uh, time frame and being sure that it's at the right time. So how much time do you spend on putting a weekly <laughs> newspaper together? It's a seven days uh, really? work job. Oh, because organization, when they're doing a show or they're doing a, a meeting, or a AGM, an annual general meeting, it's volunteers, so they're doing that overnight or weekend. So we need to cover them on, we, on, on, on nights or when that happens. Our regular schedule is Wednesday to Tuesday. So oh. Wednesday is the first day of the week, and Tuesday we need to be at press for 5 p.m. So that's the time frame we're working with, and we need to make sure we respect the, the deadline. If not, people will, will not get their newspaper. So we, we decide, we, uh, we have a small maybe uh, uh, reporter uh, meeting and we decide, okay, what's up this week and how do we want to cover that? And let's say if everything falls right in place and, and all depends also on the advertising. That's advertising decide if we do 12, 16, 20 or 24 page. Oh. If advertising is there, we're going, and it's always uh, by four. We cannot okay. do an 18 page or a 22 page. We would love sometime because maybe sometime we have only just, just a little bit too much advertising and we never say no to advertising. And after that, we need to jump four pages at a time. So that's why we have like, say, uh, uh, maybe big feature of people. It's, uh, the, it, it's not hard news. It could be f uh, published anytime. So uh, oh. we, we could use them when we jump four pages. So it by Friday, so by Friday, we know how many pages we will have. And by after that, we decide, OK, our, is, it, is our plan still the same or do we need to change a few things and make sure that we could cover everything? And also being a provincial newspaper, 
we need to cover things that happen in the Peace River region because we got yes. uh, lots of francophones over there. We got francophones in Leverage, in Bonneville, in, uh, all, in over. Every, all over the place. And, and they want, it's also their community newspaper. So when something happened in St. Paul, but St. Paul want them, want to make sure it's in Le Franco every week or maybe once a month. Maybe not every week, but when that happened, they want us to be there. So we try to travel maybe one or twice a year to maybe more every region. But when it's near, like near, St. Paul is two hours from Edmonton and we say it's near, we could maybe go more often than let's say Peace River region yes. because it's five hours of driving. So we need, when we go there, we decide, okay, we'll do maybe five articles and we'll publish them on a series, let's say once a month. So we, people in the Peace River region can say, oh, they talked to me this week oh, and maybe next week they will talk about me or maybe it will be the following week. And same thing with maybe uh, with the monthly here in Calgary, uh, the new monthly newspaper, people will say, oh, they, it's easier, it's once a month. But we need to make sure that we cover things that's still accurate when we publish it. Yes. And if something happened a month ago, maybe we won't, it won't do the front page, but it's still to, be, still to be in there. And I need to find a balance between what I put in the weekly and what I put in the monthly, because I still have some members here in the South that are receiving the weekly every week. If I put everything in the monthly, they will decide, wow, why should I still have a membership with ACFA or subscribe to Franco if you don't cover us every week? So, and I don't want to repeat every story. Yes. What you see in the monthly and what you see in the weekly, it's completely different. So it's a, it's a jungle. So it's, it's Quite to, the challenge. Trying to, to fight, and it's new, so it's still a, a good challenge. It's still exciting. People, uh, the, uh, the welcome here is, was overwhelming. People are very happy about the monthly for now. For now, <laughs> we'll see uh, in a four. I, I gave me a one year. It was one year to make sure it make is uh, expense and we could cover uh, the, the losses cost. or the cost of producing a newspaper. And I'm in the right track. So we're kind of happy that it still be there over one year. It all depends on advertising. What about color? I've noticed that it's more and more colorful now. I think people want maybe more color. One thing we need to know about newspaper and sometimes when you print a page in color, you print actually four pages in color because when you're going to press, it's four pages at a time. So you, you need, it's still expensive, but you could buy maybe eight or 12 pages of a 16 in color. And what I'm trying to do is uh, divide the color by each client. Instead of asking the big price to each, uh, each client, I'm, I'm maybe cutting the price of everyone, but I'm still covering my costs so that make us easier to have color and i think today for printers with internet uh, it's easier to do uh, color than it was before yes. when i started in the business it was in 95 it was no internet but internet and a newspaper was it was maybe it was not there at that time when we had a nad in color it came in a film with four for uh, for sheets of a color, the the yellow and oh, yeah. the red and the magenta and, every, uh, and everything. So today you just send a PDF. It's in CMYK and that's it. Maybe it's easier today to. Easier. Uh, we print a newspaper in Wainwright, so and I'm in Edmonton oh. and it's delivered in Calgary. So you can see how easy it's today with the technology. Uh, yeah. You don't need to cut every pages and uh, and bring it to the press. It's all over the internet now. Yes, one really. Quick yep. uh, question for you. I heard Newsweek was going to internet only as of January. Would you ever think of doing that? I think the opportunity we have, we're a francophone newspaper in a francophone minority. So people still want their newspaper every week, uh, the, the hard copy. Going to internet, we might lose some advertising from the federal government because it's not the same business. They want still the, the, the printing part of being there. Yeah. And for my weekly, the average age of readers is like 50, 55 years old right now. So they still want their hard copy. And I do believe it's a, it's a tool, the Francophone newspaper being with all that Anglophones newspaper they have around. So that we, was a good answer. We still need that. Thank tool. you for being with us yeah. today. Nous allons continuer la version en français.
de ce programme. Merci.